Yo, what's up guys? JJ here, and today I want to talk about how I've been breeding African cichlids. So I've had this tank right behind me set up for about six months and we've had a lot of breeding activity going on and we've got a lot of fry that are growing out to be almost adult size. They're, uh, they're actually probably selling size now. So I just want to talk about kind of the process if anybody was interested in finding out how to do it. Maybe you've got African cichlids and they're spawning already or you were thinking about getting some and wanted some more information. So in this video you'll see a lot of my electric yellow cichlids or my yellow labs. Um, but anything I say pretty much goes for any Mbuna cichlid or most Lake Malawi cichlids. Like if you have peacocks, their process is going to be similar as well. Let's start by talking about uh, sexing the fish. A lot of times you want to make sure you have a certain ratio. Um, I know if you have like live bears or something, they say you know one male to two or three females or whatever. These guys are actually pretty tough to sex without like actually uh, looking behind the anal fin and grabbing them and flipping them over. So I would say um, you just need to start with a group. Maybe get a group of about six. I started with a dozen because I wanted enough to fill up this big tank here. But I, I think you could start as low as six and pretty much be guaranteed at least enough of each sex for you to have some breeding. Now one of the interesting things about African cichlids or at least in Buna cichlids, is that they are mouth brooders, meaning basically they'll lay the eggs and the eggs will be fertilized and then as soon as they're fertilized the female picks them back up, snatches them back up and holds them in her mouth and what that does is keep those eggs safe from predators. Um, so that's a really interesting process. It's hard for me to get on tape but they kind of go around in a circle like the female lay the egg, the male will swirl around and fertilize it, and then the female will swirl back around and pick up the egg in her mouth. And it's super cool. They've got kind of like a yin and yang to it, the way they swirl around. But once you have a female holding eggs, and you'll know, because if you look close, she'll be the one that's not eating when you feed. She'll have her gills might be puffed out, or she'll have some uh, puffiness in the bottom of her mouth because her mouth is full of eggs and she's swishing those around and tumbling them to keep them from getting fungus. But when you see you have that fish with her mouth full and she's not eating, then you can pretty much be sure that she's got eggs. Now a female will hold the eggs in her mouth for about three weeks. Sometimes I've had them go as long as a month until those eggs are like free swimming fry. Now some people will strip the eggs when they know the female is holding and I'll show you guys how to do that here in a bit. But I wouldn't recommend it, especially if it's your first batch and you're just kind of learning the process. Because if you strip the eggs too soon, then you have to get an egg tumbler and it's a whole different process. I'd recommend letting nature take its course and letting the female hold them pretty much the full term. So I'm in the fish room uh, right by one of my breeding racks because I want to show you the process after I know the female's holding. And we may be able to strip some fry today. Um, they're pretty close to ready if they're not all the way ready to be free swimming. So let's check it out. And I don't recommend stripping fry, um, especially if it's your first time. I would just let nature take its course. But I've seen this a few times and I am pretty sure that these babies are ready to swim on their own. So I've got a rack of tanks here and we've got a few females that have been holding eggs for a while. You can't see them because they just hide in these coconuts. If you're ever breeding small cichlids, they love to hide in coconuts. I don't know what it is. It's like breeding magic. I should show you guys how I make them in a different video. Or you can get yours at jjgills.shop. Link in description. But basically, we've got a mother with a mouth full. And look, we've got one or two free swimming now. And I like to keep some java moss in here to give the babies some cover, um, to keep the mother safe or feeling comfortable. But I think she had more free swimming and she slurped them back up to protect them, which is really cool. But I'm going to pull her out because if I've got one swimming now, I know I can pull her out real quick and strip these fry and show you guys how that goes. Uh, so I've just got a regular container just to catch these babies. And we've got the mother in here. We know she's holding a mouthful. Now, I try to make this quick. It doesn't hurt them because you don't have to like squeeze. It's really gentle. Oh my gosh, half the babies fell out. 
You can be really gentle here. But I just want to show you guys, and I wouldn't recommend doing this. I'm messing up for the camera. But yeah, she's got a mouthful here. Does not hurt the fish, it's really gentle. And then I just put her back in the tank. So I've got about 15 in here, and I think there were some that are already swimming in the tank, which is a pretty good batch. Um, these fish are still relatively young, so I'm used to getting 10 to 12 maybe. And I'm looking in the tank, I do see one or two free swimming fry that we missed, and I think the mom might still have one or two. And I'm going to let her do those on her own time. And I'm going to put these guys in with this tank that already has some babies in it. I've got a grow out tank that I'll show you guys, but I think the grow out tank, the fish are too large right now to introduce new fry. I think they might treat them as a snack. So I just stirred up all of the, um, all the mulm and the java moss in here, but we might still be able to see some of those babies in there. There's three batches in here, so we probably have about three dozen, maybe a little more. And then there's another mother in here that's still holding eggs. I don't know if we can see her. So you see how puffy that mouth is and how her mouth is staying closed? Yeah, she's got another clutch of eggs. I'm not going to pull those today, but they're coming very soon within the next week or so. And then I'm gonna let those guys grow up for a couple weeks and then we'll put them in here. I just don't want them to be a snack for some of these larger ones. Because we do have some that have grown out to be like over an inch. Uh, back when they were all small, I used to let the mothers spit their babies in here uh, in the larger tank. And then once you have a fry, um, they're not too hard to grow out. There's just one thing that's a little different than a lot of other fish if you're growing out in Buna Fry. It's that they're mostly herbivores, so you don't want to load them up with a bunch of protein. A lot of times when people are trying to grow out fry, they're talking about brine shrimp and blood worms and just feeding out protein, protein, protein to help growth. You're not going to want to do these because they need plant matter. So you're going to be feeding things like spirulina. I also sometimes just grind up algae wafers or like a veggie pellet like the ones that I feed to my adult fish. But I definitely would stay away from overloading them with protein, and that's how they get bloat, and then you're going to have some not make it. So that's pretty much it. I, I think that breeding African cichlids can be a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed watching the process and growing out the fry, and now i got to find a seller to buy some of these fish off me, which could be a cool video coming very soon but I can't tell you that just yet. But if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe because we've got all kinds of stuff going on in the fish room. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.